What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at styling our pagination for Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at styling our pagination using Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set up our pagination, but it didn't look that great. In this video, we want to sort of, you know, toggle around and make it look nicer. And we're going to use Bootstrap for that. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django Wednesday videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So in the last video, we set up our pagination. And I'm looking at venue.html. And you see we have this just very basic HTML. And if we come back to the website here, if I hit reload and go to venues, this is the pagination we have. So first previous is very sort of boring and not very nice looking. So in this video, we want to spruce this up. So let's head over to getbootstrap.com, click on docs. And we've been using bootstrap throughout this series. So if you don't know what I'm talking about here. Go back and watch the previous videos. But we've been using Bootstrap. So here we can come down, click on Components, and then come down to Pagination right there. And here you see we have all kinds of options. We can do it like this. We can do it just with, uh, you know, these little arrow things. We can have disabled things, which we're going to look at. All kinds of stuff. So to use this, very simple. We just kind of grab this code. And we'll go through this here. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Head back over to our code. And let's see, right up here, I'm just going to paste all this in right above our if venues logic that we did in the last video. So here's the two main things we need at the top. This sort of designates that we're going to do pagination. This sets a UL class. We're going to use an unordered list. Unordered lists have list items, and those are usually bullet points. But in this case, there's not going to be little bullet points next to one because this is a, a pagination it gets rid of those and it adds all that style that we looked at at the beginning of this video. So inside of here, we need to put this around these li tags around all of our links. So I'm just going to come down here. And here's one and we come to the end and we need to close that li tag. And then here's another one. And then we can close that one. And let's just come down here. Here's another one, we can close that one. Here's another one, we can close that one. Now we also have this page number stuff. So I'm going to do it for that one as well, even though this isn't a link, we're going to make it into a link so that it sort of fits in here. And okay, that looks good. So that's part of it. Now if you come up here and look, we also need to take our href tags and add this class, this class of page dash link. So we need to add that to all of our links. So let's come through here and here a href, I'm just going to pop that in there. And Again, I'm going to pop that one in there. Come down here, slap that guy in, and then that guy. Now you can put this anywhere in the A tag. I put it between the A and href just because I'm lazy, but put it anywhere. So, and now we can get rid of all of this stuff. Oh, no, actually, we can get rid of all of these things. All right. So now we also have this page number thing. And so I'm going to go a ref equals. And inside of here, I'm just going to, I'm going to put a number sign here, a hashtag. And I'm also going to give this a class of that thing, page link. And then here at the end, I'm going to close that a tag. And we'll deal with this in just a second. So okay, now we've got the opening stuff for our navigation. This is the closing tags, this closing UL and closing nav. So we need to copy this and put this below all of our pagination stuff. So okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this head back over here and see if that worked. Probably messed something up. But okay, it looks good. So we have first we have previous, we have next and we have last we also have this page five of six and it doesn't really go anywhere. So we need to either get rid of that or sort of gray it out. So it's not actually a link. And we can do that if we come down here to our bootstrap, we can see we can work with disabled and active links. So here you see previous is grayed out, I can't click on it, there's no link. So to do that, we give it an li class of page item disabled. So we can do that, head back over here and find those things. So here it is, right? So instead of page item, it's page item disabled. So if we save this, head back over here, that's not 
quite everything. Uh, yep, yeah, no, that'll do it. So you can see now this is no longer a link. It's still there, it's still useful, it still updates, right? And that looks good. So, okay, that really is kind of it. I mean, that's all we really need. But what if you want, instead of it saying page five of six, you want the actual pages. So a list of one, two, three, four, five, and six. How do we do that? Well, that's a little tricky. So what we can do, we head back over here. We can see, well, actually, we can see, we know how many pages there are. There's going to be six. And we know that because remember in the last video, we looked, where's our code? Remember in the last video, all this stuff here, we can see we can get the current page and we can get the number of pages. So we know at any given time what the number of pages is, it's this venues.paginator.num pages. So an easy thing would just be to loop through that and for every time we loop through it, we can iterate through it and print out a number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, till we iterate to the end of six and then it stops. And that's easy to do with Python, but we're not really using Python on this page. I mean, we sort of do with these if statements, but we can't quite do like pure Python on this page. We know this, this is Django. These are like Jinja type things, right? So what can we do? Well, it's actually kind of fun. I started thinking about this and I came up with a little hack. I'm not sure if this is the official way to do it, but it worked for me. So I'm just gonna do it. So I'll show it to you here. Let's comment this stuff out. So let me save this, come back and see what we're working with here now. So this page five of six thing will disappear. All right. So instead we want a list of one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So let's come back over here. So here, normally we could, you could try something like for, let's say I in, now we know we have this venues, paginators, page numbers, right? So we could do that, right? For I in that list, and then we would just, and four, and inside of here, we could just print out, well, for now, let me just print out I, right? So if we save this, come back over here, we're gonna get an error. Now, we can't, an integer object is not iterable on a view like that, right? So there's a way around this, stick with me here. We need to create a string that has the same number of characters as our number of lists. So what do I mean by that is like we could have a string that was like one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a string with six characters. Now Django will iterate over a string of X number of characters. I have no idea why. So we need to create that. So we need to do that in a view and then pass it in. So let's do that. So we know how many things are gonna be in our list by this thing right here. So I'm gonna copy this, head back over to our view, and in our list venues, let's create a variable called nums, right? And that's gonna be venues.pageagitator.numpages, right? So we can now pass that nums into the context dictionary like we always do, right? So we don't want the nums, we want a string of nums length characters. So what we can do is just, you know, make something up, A, and then multiply it by that. And that will give us A, 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 right? It's ridiculous, but this should work. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here. And just for fun down here at the bottom, uh, let's just see what that's returning. So nums, right? So save this, head back over here. Oh, actually we need to, uh, let me just sort of, copy this and delete it because that'll throw an error. So, okay, let's come back here. And now here we see A, 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 A. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because there are six venues, right? Our pagination is six. Now this will update if we change the pagination. So for instance, if we come back over here and go to our views.py file, remember here, we set it at one. If we set this at three, right? that would be two pages because we have six venues, right? So this now will update to just AA, two, right? So we've got our little counter here in, a, in essence, our hacky little counter, and this should work. So what do we do with this? Well, let me change this back to one. Now we can come back here and let me paste that stuff back in. And this is almost the same, but now instead of num pages, we just wanna iterate through num itself, right? And instead of I, 
we do this weird little thing for Django. It's called for loop dot counter, right? I don't know, right? But that's what it does. So let's go ahead and save this. And this still isn't going to quite work yet. But if we hit reload, now it's still not working because we have to set up the uh, HTML here. So we have to do this same stuff. So first of all, we need that. Right? And we also need to create a link, an href link. So let's grab that. And so here, instead of venues dot page number, this is going to be that for loop counter right here. So I'll pass that in there. And then we want the for loop counter out here. That looks good. And then we need to close our a tag. So okay, I think that should do the trick. So let's go back over here, hit reload. And something's gone wrong, not working. Where are we at? Ah, this should be nums. There we go. It's down here. Yeah. So let's get rid of this guy down here. All right. So yeah, that'll work now. So let's head back over here, hit reload. And there we go. So this is the first previous. We can go to page one, we can go to page two, we have first previous one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Boom, we can go to three, we can go to next, we can go to last. And it works. Very cool. Now again, if we change this around inside of our view, so if we say we want this, we want uh, instead of one per page, we want two per page, this will give us three pages because we have six venues, right? We can come back here, boom, it updates it here too. And we'll go to page two, there's two per page. That works, right? Very cool and very easy. And like I said, I'm not really sure if that's how you do it, with Django, but we need a loop. And we need to know how many pages to loop through. And I know Django gives us doesn't give us a whole lot of options for looping through iterable things using Python. So this kind of works. And I don't know, it's pretty easy. So if you guys know a better way to do it, tell me in the comment section below, but this is how I've always done it. And it's just really easy. Now I use the letter A, you can use any letter, you don't want to use a number. Well, you could use a number in quotes, but if you did it like this, this would be three times six, this would return 18, right? Not a string of six characters like you would want. So make sure this is a string, make sure this is in quotation marks, and then just pass it in to our page. And then we can loop through it, like I said, with this weird little four I in nums. And the weird thing here is the loop itself. It, Django, for some reason, will keep track if you use for loop dot counter, because basically that's what this whole thing is. It's a hacked counter so that we can iterate through a for loop and a list using Django and Jinja and whatever, right? So very cool and uh, pretty easy. So that's how you add style using Bootstrap. And again, come back over here, spend a little time, go through here, play with these things. Previous, we've got the previous thing grayed out. Maybe you want it to be like here on the very first page, that previous stuff is gone. Maybe you want to put it there, but have it grayed out. Well, you can do that. You can, I'll let you do that by using this disabled thing instead of the page item thing. So you're gonna to have to do some logic and stuff in there to determine when to do that. But I think you could probably do that on your own. Uh, you can play around with the sizing, you can see read through here to get this different sizing. If you want this in the middle of the screen, you can do alignment. So you know, you're gonna do something like here, pagination justify content center for your UL class. And boy, I'm not sure if that's all we need to do. Let's copy this and see real quick. Uh, to, to, to come up here to our UL class pagination, give it a justify content center. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Yep, that's cool. So now it's right in the middle. So maybe you like that. Very cool. And let me change, change this back real quick from two to one, just so we have more to look at, right? So okay, now it's bigger. Very cool. And uh, just that simple. So again, go through here. That's pretty much all there is to this pagination. Uh, it talks about icons uh, right here. But the icons are just those things we did earlier, the RAQU, the right arrow quote, and the LAQU, the left arrow quote. That's what it's calling icons. All right, and we've got those anyway. So you don't really need to do it by heading a span there unless it's the only thing in there, I guess. But even then I think you could just do it without but I'll let you play around with that. 
and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.